Hey everybody, it's Chris Bumry here again for Joe Blow, and we've got an early review of Black Adam, starring this guy you might have heard of named Dwayne The Rock Johnson. So, in Black Adam, a mythical hero to the occupied city of Kandak is released into modern times. While the woman who freed him and her family hope that he will liberate his people, Black Adam is not the hero they think he is, with him hiding a dark secret that puts him in conflict with the Justice Society of America who want to stop his deadly rampage. Now, DC's Black Adam is undoubtedly a passion project for Dwayne The Rock Johnson. He's been attached to it in some form or another for about 15 years, with the initial plan to use him as a villain in the Shazam movie. That obviously didn't happen, but believing in the promise of the character, Johnson held out until he could get a movie all of his own, and indeed, Black Adam is among the most ambitious movies the star has ever made, with everyone's goal clearly to spin this off into a major franchise for all involved. In the end, Black Adam is an entertaining superhero epic, but it's also a movie that feels like it's been focus grouped to death, or reverse engineered to be the biggest hit possible, which is all well and good, but it lacks the personal touch that have made DC movies including Joker, The Batman, Wonder Woman, and even the Snyderverse films so compelling. Like them or not, one can't say the Snyder movies were anything but a distinct vision. Even if people didn't care for them, they were their own thing and they had an identity all of their own. Here, Black Adam takes a page out of the MCU handbook, with this an origin tale that also functions as a way to introduce a whole bunch of characters DC is likely trying to spin off into properties of their own, and the result is that Black Adam too often feels like a supporting character in his own movie. As a critic, my biggest worry going into this was actually Dwayne Johnson. Like everyone, I like him. You can't help but like Dwayne The Rock Johnson. But I always felt that he does the same role over and over. And somewhere around Jungle Cruise, I have to say his stuff just stopped working for me. That said, Johnson has clearly put a lot of effort into making Black Adam different, with the clear desire to make this his new signature character. What's cool is that Johnson gives the character a dark side, having him kill without hesitation, although it's also obvious right from the start that even if the goal eventually is to pit him against a bigger DC hero, Black Adam is ultimately a hero through and through. Johnson makes him compelling and likable. One movie that's clearly a model for Black Adam is Terminator 2 Judgment Day, with them channeling Black Adam's lack of worry over the escalating body count for humor, and they even give him a John Connor-like child sidekick. While this may sound bad, it actually isn't, with The Rock nailing the humor, the action, and the ultimately sweet relationship with the kid, who's the son of the woman who unearthed him, played by Sarah Shahi. Rather, my biggest issue with Black Adam is the emphasis on the JSA as they distract too much from the hero. I think the JSA could have been included, specifically Pierce Bros and its Dr. Fate and Aldous Hodge's Hawkman, as they serve as foils and physical threats to Black Adam, but there's too many of them, with Noah Centino and Quintessa Swindell's Adam Smasher and Cyclone feeling like they stumbled in from another, much more youth-oriented movie. Neither gets much to do, and they would have been better served with a movie of their own. It's not that either of them is bad in the movie at all. They just don't feel like they belong in a Black Adam movie. It feels like a transparent effort by WB and DC to get people craving a spin-off following the characters. But when they're the focus, Black Adam is forgotten, with him even sidelined for part of the last act, in which feels like a big misstep, because you go see a Black Adam movie for Black Adam. However, it has to be said, Pierce Brosnan is just terrific as the world-weary Dr. Fate, who senses Black Adam's powers could be used for good, and Aldous Hodge, also very good as Hawkman, who's kind of Dr. Fate's protege in this film and is a much harder-edged hero that perhaps takes too much pride in essentially being a peacekeeper for the mortal world. There's a good bit where Sarah Shahi's character gives the JSA a hard time for turning a blind eye to the tyrants of the world, as those are the people that have always run Kandak, with them only concerned once they get a person that they can rally behind that isn't easily controlled. So indeed, Black Adam is a mixed bag. On the plus side, you have The Rock giving a fully committed performance, as well as Pierce Brosnan and Aldous Hodge. But then on the negative side, you have too many side characters, and eventually one of the weakest DC villains ever, who's such a non-entity, uh, barely worth mentioning in the review. He's just a red herring, I guess that's supposed to be a surprise, but you can really see where the movie is going right from the first scene. I'm not going to give it away here, but suffice to say, the villain is hella lame in this film. Someone that was a threat to Black Adam should have been brought in, and perhaps that's ultimately the biggest problem with The Rock as an action star, as he's always presented himself as this kind of unstoppable force, with no bad guy ever even remotely a credible threat to him. Speaking of credible threats, though, I must admit that if there's a mid-credit reveal, which is 
been you know highly rumored about i don't know what it was as the version that was screened for press when i saw it didn't have that scene actually a part of it it was removed from the credits and you could tell because the music kind of jumped at one point which was kind of disappointing but you know i guess that makes us all have to go see the movie again right there is definitely a mid-credits scene though we just didn't get it on the print that i saw in the end black adam is a large scaled action flick with joe may call it sarah doing a good job in the action scenes which also are beautifully photographed by dp lawrence Scher, who you know of course filmed the joker often the movie feels like a Marvel wannabe and not as distinct as, for better or worse, other DC movies have been. I have no doubt that plenty of fans will love Black Adam, but to me it felt like a tease of bigger things to come, whereas other DC movies focused on being a more singular experience. Even something like Wonder Woman 1984, which I'm not saying is a good movie, is a very specific singular work. Black Adam, though, it feels like it's kind of, you know, building towards something else, like a lot of the early Marvel movies, or pretty much every Marvel movie feels like these days, where it's not its own thing. It doesn't have its own specific identity. That's too bad, though, because MCU does this and, of course, does this very well, but DC should be kind of carving their own path. I'm assuming Black Adam is going to be a huge hit, and I'm sure that probably DC is going to try to do as much Marvel-style stuff as they can, but it's too bad because I do miss the days of DC where you had these more you know, idiosyncratic directors like Patty Jenkins or Zack Snyder being involved. Oh well, at least we still have Matt Reeves doing the Batman movies and Todd Phillips doing some really weird Joker films, which of course are awesome. So in the end, Black Adam, a bit disappointing compared to other DC movies, but, you know, hardly a disaster either. It's a good time at the movies, and I give it a 6 out of 10.